Hello again. In this video I'll be building and benchmarking this older PC with an AMD Phenom 2 X6 CPU. This Phenom 2 X6 is the 1090T variant, which I think means it's the second most powerful CPU from its lineup. Motherboard will be this weird DFI LAN party AM3 board, which is a brand I've not come across before. It seems DFI doesn't make consumer motherboards anymore, and the support page for this motherboard is no longer up, which means if you want to upgrade the BIOS, you'll need to hunt down the update file from some random forums, which I eventually did. And I needed to update the BIOS, because when I first installed this 6-core CPU, the PC would be really slow and it would not show the CPU model number correctly. So I thought that I probably just needed a BIOS update to support the CPU, which seemed to be the case. Oh, and by the way, on the screen you can see my numerous failed attempts to update the BIOS, because this motherboard does not have any easy instant flash style method of updating the BIOS from the BIOS itself. Instead, you'll have to boot DOS and use AWD flash to flash the BIOS. But I simply couldn't figure out how to do that, so next I tried with Linux using FlashROM and a BIOS programmer. However, FlashROM told me that this is an unsupported BIOS chip, which gets us to why I am installing Windows XP here. To use WinFlash to update the BIOS, which does need Windows XP and won't run on newer OSs. WinFlash did take its time, but it eventually informed me that the BIOS update was successful. After a reboot, I could finally see the processor being recognized correctly in the post screen. After this BIOS flash, the CPU side of things would work flawlessly. However, the GPU 560Ti I initially planned to install in this build turned out defective and refused to accept a BIOS flash. I installed GTX 465 here instead. Well, it would have been a bit too nice to fix both the GPU and motherboard in the same build with a BIOS flash. For this build I'll be using an old, heavy Antec case and it's missing its drawer, so I'll be loaning some covers from other Antec case that does have the door. I had to mount the side fan using rubber bands, because it wouldn't fit with the original dust filter. The boot disk will be a 120GB SSD and for additional storage, there's 260GB HDDs. I think the name of this case is Antec P190 Plus 1200. The 1200 coming from the fact that this has dual PSUs. The main PSU is 650W and the additional PSU is 550W. So that's 1200W combined. It would have been possible to run this whole PC from just the main 650W PSU, but the 550W PSU only has SATA and Molex connectors and no 24 pin, so I couldn't use the 550W to power another build anyway, unless I would modify the PSU, which I'm not comfortable doing. One quirk of this case is that it comes with this light, which can be powered through a USB header or a Molex connector. The light is quite dim, I don't know if it was brighter when it was new, but I doubt this light has been of much use to anyone with this case. At first some of the motherboard's USB ports didn't work and I had to switch the positions of these blue USB PWR jumpers to get them to work. While the rest of the fans are original, the two topic sourced fans have been replaced for some obligatory RGB to sell a gaming PC. While the PC is idling, the power consumption seems to be 180 watts, but when running Fire Strike and Prime 95 simultaneously, the power consumption rises to 360 watts. Moving to benchmarking some games, the CPU does not have the SSE3 instruction set that is required to launch an increasing amount of modern games, so for example Hitman 3 does not launch at all. 
Since I can't use Shadow Play with this old Nvidia GPU, all of these games have been recorded with MSI Afterburner, so it has a CPU performance impact. Starting the benchmarks with a CPU heavy Beeman G drive, the game runs on 1080p and lowest settings, and it does seem to be barely playable in this scenario which has no traffic. It does do better than the quad core Phenom 2s, but there's still some dips below 20 FPS. And there's another scenario with lots of traffic and as you can see the FPS here is much lower. Dishonored, not being one of the most recent or the most demanding games, does run very well on this hardware. There he is, good boy, sir. Hello, sir. Her Majesty is waiting in the pavilion. The spy master is with all the Amnesia Rebirth at 1080p does work very well. This game has a problem with the MSI Afterburner recording, but when I was not recording I was able to get a stable 60fps, so very playable. Fortnite at 1080p performance mode worked really well and the FPS was at average above 60, so it was very playable.
Valorant at 1080p works really well. It seems to be staying above 80 FPS almost all the time. Now we're cooking. 